Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 2168B, and today's date is May 7th, 2020, and the title of the episode is Knock Knock, The Deep State Has You, Time to Wake Up, Flynn Exonerated, Pain. Let's talk about being prepared. As people become sheltered in place because of the recent pandemic going around the world, your best friend may be the solar water heater. The solar water heater is an amazing device that allows you to heat and boil water outdoors using simple sunlight, depending on the conditions. The solar water heater can heat water in as little as 30 minutes and will work anywhere the sun shines. You can use it to boil water, cook noodles, rice, or sterilize water for drinking. The solar water heater is the perfect tool in times of need. Limited supplies last, and this is the very last chance to get 15% off the new 2020 model before they sell out. Take advantage now and give the perfect gift for the outdoorsman please visit solarwaterheater.com click the link below let's get into the economic collapse political and geopolitical news now the deep state players they are panicking those individuals in dc are panicking obama is panicking comey schiff they're all panicking why what happened flynn was exonerated today the department of justice dropped the case we had certain individuals that withdrew and most likely they're going to resign and they're very nervous about what comes next now of course the mainstream media those deep state players are going to try to spin this until the very end but how do we know they're panicking how do they how do we know that they're worried about all of this well you can tell by their actions remember it's not just about flynn it's not just about declassifying certain fisa warrants it's about the clinton email scandal it's about the DNC hack. It's about the Uranium One scandal. It's about the Uranium scandal. It's about spying on a presidential candidate. It's about trying to remove a duly elected president. It's about spying on other individuals and blackmailing judges. It's about putting forth the 16-year plan to destroy the United States. This is what this is all about. This is what they're panicking about. It's not, oh, just Flynn. They're panicking that all of this is going to come out. How do we know that they're worried? Well, look what Obama did. Obama decided to come out of the woodwork and he wrote a letter to the National Archives and Records Administration, NARA, which manages presidential records. Why would Obama, four years after leaving office, suddenly write a letter to the National Archives? What would be the purpose of this? What's in the National Archives? Well, these are the administration records on Ukraine-related meetings, on everything else. What was he telling them to do? He's telling them, do not release the Biden-Ukraine docs. So, four years later, Obama is saying, don't release any information to the Department of Justice or to the President or anyone else that asked for it. Do you think this is going to work? Trump is now the President. He has the ability to declass all of it. Yes, even the records in the National Archives. Nobody is safe. Now, we're going to be talking about Flynn what's happening next. Q has been posting quite a bit, but first we know there was a lot of information that was declassified. Now remember, everyone's waiting for this gigantic flag that's saying, oh look, declassification. What you're seeing every single day is the declassification. Why are they doing it in drips? Because each time they do this, it's more and more pain. Each time they do this, they educate the public. Yes, You've been hearing about this for a very long time. But those people who are asleep, they don't understand. So if you slowly bring them in and they start to wake up and they start to ask questions and you have the people behind you as we move forward, the outcome will be that much better. And the people can go up against the mainstream media and say, no, 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 you're not telling the whole story. We're not listening to you anymore. People will find the truth. They always do. When you try to censor something on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube and you heard about it and you can't find it, what do you do? 
you keep searching until you find it because you want to see what that's all about. Why would they hide this? And we need to remember this censorship that we're seeing today, it's the same thing they did back in the day when they burned books. When they take down videos or podcasts or tweets, it's the same thing. They don't want you to see certain information, period. This is modern day book burning. That's what you're witnessing right now. Now, very interestingly, there were scope memos that were released. They were declassified. And Technofog noticed something in one of the memos. It says, does the redacted section of the 8-2-2017 Mueller scope memo relate to President Trump? Recall McCabe's admission that he opened an FBI investigation into Trump as an agent of Russia in May of 2017. So the question is, is this what this is? Is it an investigation into Trump? Well, we don't know as of yet, but it's starting to look that way. Now, very interestingly, we know that Schiff, he's holding on to the documentation. He doesn't want to release the documentation. These are the 53 transcripts because in these 53 transcripts, it's going to show that there's nothing there and he's been hiding it from the public and he's hesitant in releasing it. And we can see acting DNI Grinnell is saying, listen, we have it all ready for you. Let's do this. You promised. Now, once again, this is not going to be good for Schiff. And Don Jr. tweeted this out. Agreed. Please mind too. Seems we have nothing to hide, so I wonder who Adam Schiff is protecting. Seems the others who testified and haven't been calling for transparency are Obama officials. So Don Jr. is saying, listen, release my stuff, my transcripts. Release it all. Let's see what's, what's there. What is Schiff protecting? You know what he's protecting. Now, Lindsey Graham came out and he's starting the narrative that there was no legal justification for the Mueller appointment. So think about this. If there was no justification for the Mueller appointment, there was no case, no basis for it. Everything that Mueller did is null and void. Now, I know Flynn was just exonerated, but that entire case would be null and void. Everything with Manafort, with Stone, everything that you saw happen, null and void. The impeachment that they had, null and void. Everything would be null and void because they base it on a lot of things that Mueller was doing. And if you look at Mueller's case and then bring it up to what the House did with the calls to Ukraine, it's all null and void. There was nothing there. This is why they don't want to release the information. Now, very interestingly, we know out in Venezuela, Maduro captured two U.S. citizens and he said that these individuals were sent into his country to kill him. That's pretty much what he said. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, he came out and said, listen, these were not our people. We did not send them in there. If we did, the outcome would have been very different. Who do you think sent these individuals in there? Now, the first one, he is Arian Berry, 41. The other one is Luke Denham, 34. And they are former U.S. Special Force soldiers. So they're mercenaries right now. So that is very interesting. Why were they sent in there? Were they trying to start something? Absolutely. They were hired mercenaries. They're paid mercenary forces. This is what the intelligence organization does. They're trying to push something like they've done in North Korea, like they've done in Syria, like they've done everywhere. And they're trying to do it here. They're trying to get Trump to react in some way, somehow. But did he? No, he did not. Now, very interestingly, we know that Project Veritas, they went ahead and they did this undercover report of CBS where they took this testing center and they had the medical personnel form the line to make it look like there's a lot of patients that are going to be tested, interviewed a lot of doctors and nurses that were in there, and they said the whole thing was fake. Well, CBS is out there now saying they deny all of it. They weren't aware of this. They weren't aware of the stage COVID-19 testing line. So what did they do? They took the whole report down. They were caught. And each time they're caught, they can deny it. Everyone denies it. But the evidence shows that this was planned. Someone must have known this is what they were doing. They, people just don't do it. 
You get instructions from above and then people follow those instructions. So once again, the mainstream media pushing fake news. Now, what's very interesting is that in Texas, the woman that was jailed for seven days and had to pay something like a $7,000 fine, it seems that the governor of Texas and the deputy governor, lieutenant governor, is coming to her rescue. Now, first, Greg Abbott, he tweeted this out, throwing Texas in jail, whose biz shut down through no fault of their own, is wrong. I'm, I am eliminating jail for violating an order retroactive to April 2nd, superseding local orders. Criminals shouldn't be released to prevent COVID-19 just to put business owners in their place. Then we have Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. He's saying, I'm going to pay the fines for the salon owner and I will take the seat in jail so she can go free. Now, that shows me this is their actions. If he actually does this, that's a true leader. When the leader notices that, look, these individuals' rights are being violated and they're backing the Constitution and this person is paying for the person's fine and taking the seat in the jail cell and allowing this person to go free, that is what a true leader does. Go back in time. Remember when leaders used to be in the front fighting? They used to be on the front lines, not in suits, hiding in the back. True leaders are always out in the front. They always take the hit because that's what a true leader does. So we can see that people are starting to wake up to all this. Actually, Sidney Powell tweeted this out. Americans have a right to work and open their businesses. It's the lockdowns that are unconstitutional. And as New York Governor Cuomo is learning, completely ineffective at anything except destruction. But once again, the people have to be shown the people now are waking up all over the place and they're starting to realize, I don't want a country like this. I don't want to live like this. I don't want people telling me what to do, telling me that I can't make a living, support my family. The people are being shown what the country would be like if they finished out the 16 year plan. Remember, we talked about this before. This would have been a third world nation without a constitution and it would have been a disaster. Actually, I do believe California was the model of what the country was going to look like. And I'm not talking about the model previous to this event. I'm talking about what's happening now and 10 times worse. So what's very interesting is that the deep state, they're still pushing their agenda. Remember, The elections are coming up in November. They don't have a way to cheat. Trump has shut down all the entrances, all the exits, building a wall, shut off their funding, and they can't cheat in the next election. So they're getting very nervous. And what's happening now is they're trying to figure out a way on how they can push mail-in voting. So the CDC is coming out and they're saying, due to the CV-19, We recommend mail-in voting, even though Trump administration has tons of facts and information about how mail-in voting is just ripe with fraud. But what they're doing here is they're pushing a certain agenda. Also, the CDC, they also had guidelines on how to reopen the economy. Now, as we know, when Trump came into office, he doesn't listen to the intelligence agencies like Obama and Clinton and the rest wanted him to do. He doesn't listen to certain agencies because he knows that they're filled with swamp creatures. He knows that they're not going to give him the correct advice. So he decided that the CDC guidelines are not what he wants to do. Remember, he is the president. He calls the shots. Yes, they can make recommendations, but he doesn't have to follow them. He decided to shelve those guidelines and go with his own guidelines with other people who are in the economy to give him advice. And this is how the country is opening up right now. And we need to remember something very important. It's not just about opening the country. It's about showing the people who the real tyrants are, showing the true colors of these individuals who are elected and some not elected. And this is what people are starting to observe. Now, what's very interesting is that For some reason, 
they want President Trump to get COVID-19. And this is coming out of Breaking 911. It says one of President Trump's personal valets, member of the U.S. Navy, has tested positive for COVID-19. The White House says that the president and the vice president have since tested negative for the virus and they remain in great health. Now, Trump, he does not have COVID-19. He's saying that he's going to be tested all the time now. But what's very interesting, a former CDC official, it seems that they're showing what they really want here. And this individual, Dr. Cyrus Shapar, says that Trump should quarantine himself for 14 days. They want him out of the picture so others can do their dirty work. Trump is not going to remove himself from the picture. And I wonder if Trump maybe might be taking and maybe his staff taking hydroxychloroquine or some derivative of that. And this is why every time they test him, he has nothing. I do believe they're trying to infect him with something. And this is why they keep calling him out. Do you have it? Oh my God, someone else in your administration has it. You should be tested. Oh look, someone in Pence's administration has it. You better be tested. And if you notice, it's always negative. I wonder if they're using some type of therapeutic. And this is why Trump says, all right, I'll be tested every day. He just shut that whole thing down. Now, very interestingly, while Nancy Pelosi and the rest are going after Trump on how he handled coronavirus, Kevin McCarthy, he's the House Republican leader, announced the creation of the Republican China Task Force He's going to coordinate legislative strategy on all aspects of China, and he's going to look into what they have done. He's starting an investigation into China. Now, let's get into some of Q's posts here, because Q's been posting quite a bit. A lot of stuff is happening right now with declassification, with Flynn, and what's coming next. So this is post 4,127. This is a Twitter link to DocRock1007, and this says, QAnon free speech on social media contradicting the D party con extremely dangerous to our democracy this is a video showing how all the mainstream media stations are scripted they say the same exact thing take a listen and false news has become all too common on social media more alarming some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first the sharing of biased and false False news news has become become all too too common common on on social social media media. more alarming some media Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control Now, down below, Q says, worth remembering, note, they all read from a teleprompter. Who controls the message? The deep state. They put out what they want these individuals to say. Post 4,128. This is a Twitter link to QAnon report, and it says, Michelle, Barack Obama's, all this for a damn flag. So this was a ceremony of 9-11, and someone had a camera on Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, and I think we've seen this before, and it shows Michelle Obama saying all this for a damn flag. Now, there are no words to it. She's mouthing it. So in the video, they slowed it down so you can see exactly what she's saying. And then you have Barack Obama nodding his head saying, yeah, all this for a damn flag. Q says, worth remembering. Note, rare truth caught on camera. Let's move on to post 4,129. This is a JFK meme. It says, And this is JFK in the picture back in uh, January 20th, 1961. It says, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Q says, ready to stand because we've been watching all these tyrants, all these governors, mayors. We've been watching all this. We've been watching the mainstream media. We've been watching all this and people are waking up. Are we ready to stand up to these individuals? To tell them that you cannot violate our constitutional rights. And I believe this has begun. Post 4,130. Q gives us an older post, and this is the scope memo. 
about Mueller's report. Down below, it says Rod Rosenstein's scope memo was released. Now, this is a Twitter link from Devin Nunes, and Devin Nunes says, and he's responding to the Rosenstein uh, scope memo, he says, 40 million of taxpayer money spent on conspiracy theories. Let me read this. This is from The Federalist. A newly declassified memorandum from Rod Rosenstein shows that the former Deputy Attorney General used bogus claims for from discredited Clinton campaign operative Christopher Steele to justify Robert Mueller's investigation of the Trump campaign. Former Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein's memo authorizing Robert Mueller's anti-Trump investigation was riddled with conspiracy theories lifted straight from the bogus dossier of Christopher Steele. A newly released, less redacted version of the memo shows the memo, portions of it, which were declassified on April 30th, 2020, specifically targeted former Trump campaign affiliates Carter Page, Paul Manafort, Michael Flynn, George Papadopoulos, and one individual whose identity is redacted. The August 2nd, 2017 scope memo, which was provided by the Department of Justice to the Senate Judiciary Committee following request from Senator Lindsey Graham, cited steel dossier collusion conspiracy theories about Manafort and Page. Rosenstein ordered Mueller to investigate allegations that Page committed a crime or crimes by colluding with Russian government officials with respect to the Russian government's effort to interfere with the 2016 election. The same language was used to justify the targeting of Manafort. All of this was fake. Q says, advocating overthrow of government. The scope memo that authorized Mueller to investigate the Trump campaign. And it was based on all fake information. Nothing was verified. And it's all coming out now. Drip, drip, drip. They're feeling the pain. Post 4,131. This is a Twitter link to Omar Bahiri 6. And this is about Alexa. And this individual asked Alexa, how long will the coronavirus last? Alexa answers, take a listen. How long will the coronavirus last? The virus itself may last only two more weeks or so, but the faction known as the Democrat Party will continue to make it last psychologically for at least six more months. Their motivation is to thoroughly ruin the economy and blame our great President Trump for it. They are trying to stop his inevitable re-election by any surreptitious means possible. It is well known that people who do not suffer from TDS are too smart for this hoax and will not allow it to go beyond four more weeks. The lazy Americans with TDS will continue to milk the government for more money and time off from work confusing it with being their sugar daddy. We can agree that not longer than four to six weeks in America will be back online. Q says there is so much truth in this. Now, remember, this is not coming from Alexa back at Amazon. This was programmed. You can program Alexa to answer a specific question the way you want. You can customize it. But the whole purpose of this that Q is pointing out that there is truth in this. So we're going to find out a lot more information about how this all started and what was really going on, which a lot of it I do believe we already know. Let's move on to post 4,132. This is a YouTube link to Hannity and the link that Q linked to that entire YouTube channel was taken down. So the video doesn't exist there, but it still does exist. And Q is telling us to look from the beginning all the way up to 20 min 21 minutes and 45 seconds. Now, in this video, Hannity reveals the unlawful origin of the Mueller witch hunt. And this is before Rosenstein's scope memo was even released. So this is what Q wants us to look at here. Let's move on to post 4,133. Q says, there is a reason why Congress did not return to work this week. Brackets bold DC, brackets bold non-COVID related. Next line, it says think, and this is all caps, bold brackets, boom, drops this week. And next, brackets bold 2019, 2020 plus one. Under the, it says, brackets bold C for coats before D and D is in brackets and bold D class ongoing now, which means that coats has been removed and declassification is now happening. So why didn't Congress come back? Has nothing to do with COVID because they knew 
that this information, the declassified information, was going to be dropped this week. So they decided they were going to stay out of D.C. Now, Q says, drops this week and next, 2019-2020. I believe that Q is trying to tell us to go back to 2019. And if we go back to uh, this time period, yesterday I read the post 3,334 attempts by Dems, fake news, and those guilty of treason to shape the public narrative prior to by providing falsehoods will fail. Truth to light, no sleep. Then if you look at post 335, it shows a Moab hitting Comey. And it says boom time, Baker. Now, if you fast forward to May 23rd, 2019, in post 3,337, it says important to remember page is public Remainder are still classified plus crews. So I'm wondering if a lot more information is about to come out. And Q is saying plus one. Don't know exactly how plus one fits into this, but it seems that something else is now coming. And I do believe we're going to see a lot more coming out. Let's move on to post 4,134. This is a link to military.com. Now, yesterday, Q gave us a link to this laser system that was painting a target and down below if you saw it on the video that i had on the report there was a website well this website is now a porn website and q decided okay i didn't realize that i'm going to repost this and give a different link that doesn't have a porn site down below so he gave a new link to military.com it is the same exact video but it's on the military's uh website let's go to post 4135 this is a Twitter link to Dale Bigtree. He's the individual that created that documentary about vaccines. And in this Twitter link, it says, what would you do if your six-year-old son or daughter tested positive for COVID-19 and was taken from your home to a quarantine center by Ventura Health Authorities? This shocking video demands that you plan ahead. Now, what... Dell is saying is they're saying if your home has one bathroom and there's multiple people in your home say two three and someone has COVID-19 they will be removing that person from that home this is in California Q says it's time to wake up they're looking to remove people families can you imagine if you had a child they were going to remove this child and send them someplace else or remove your brother, your sister, your father, your mother. What does this sound like to you? Is this the type of state you want to live in? This is the type of country you want to live in? Absolutely not. Remember, California, I do believe they were setting this up to be the role model of the future America. And you can see it playing out in real time. Q says it's time to wake up and it is it is time for everyone to start to wake up now what's very interesting out in california there are so many lawsuits now being filed over newsom's executive orders saying that the local government is overreaching they're violating constitutional rights and i have a funny feeling when this is all said and done these individuals that are in power they are no longer going to be in power and what's happening during this period of time people are really waking up because it's right in their faces now when you put something like this right in someone's face and they see it happening there's no way you can't wake up now am i saying that every single 100 percent of people are going to wake up no but the majority they are waking up post 4136 this is a facebook removes q anon groups and it shows all the groups that facebook decided to remove why? Because they're conspiracy theorist groups. So Anon661 says, well, wait a minute. I have a question. I'm curious why Facebook and IG are only removing, removing Q Anon conspiracy pages. Why not remove Bigfoot pages, UFO pages, flat earth pages? If it's all just silly nonsense, why is Q, Q Anon more silly or harmful than any others? And that is a good question. Why target Q anon if it's just a silly conspiracy theory where there's this individual in their basement making up stuff 
then you would remove every other conspiracy page. Down below it says, when do you expend ammunition? For what purpose? Prevent public exposure of truth. Slow limit reach. That's in brackets and bold. Coordinated media rollout designed to instill fear into users. RE discussing Q. RE risk of account termination. Coordinated media rollout designed to silence a conspiracy they deem to have significant potential. Anti-D ramifications in the 2020 presidential election. You have more power and influence than you realize. Welcome to the revolution. And this is what they do when they fear an awakening. They try to shut it down. But when you do this, people hear about it. People want to know. They're curious by nature. And people seek it out. And then once they start listening or they start reading, they want to know more. And when they start researching and finding out that the information is true, they want to know more. Why has this information been held back from me? And that's what we see happening right now. Actually, if you look, going back to 2016, when they said Russia interfered with the election, what is the social media platforms doing right now? This is a lot worse than what they were saying Russia did with you know their $100,000 of Russian ads. They're disrupting the presidential elections. They're trying to sway the elections. It's completely illegal. It's coordinated. Post 4,137. Q gives us a link to the Moscow Times, and it says Russia approves unproven malaria drug to treat coronavirus. So Russia, they're going to use hydroxychloroquine. Q says Russia using HCQ to treat COVID-19? Yes. Source of HCQ? China. China using HCQ to treat COVID-19? Yes. The more you know. Who else is going to be using this? Most likely the U.S. There's testing going on right now. We had New York testing. Their results went to the government to take a look at. And we're going, and there's plenty of other private doctors. France is doing it. Many other countries. They're all looking at this. And there's a reason why they're looking at it. Let's move on to post 4,138. This is a Twitter link to Humor Hammer Q. And it says, more of the LARPing the shills must be talking about. One minute Delta, and this is a Q proof. And what we have here is Trump, who tweeted out congratulations to former governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, and all others involved on a complete and total exoneration with a 9-0 to zero vote by the U.S. Supreme Court on the Obama Department of Justice scam referred to as Bridgegate. The Democrats are getting caught doing very evil things, and Republicans should take note this was grave misconduct by the Obama administration. So this tweet was done on May 7th, 2020 at 1.27. Q's post, which is 4,137, was done on May 7th, 2020 at 1.26.03. So it's approximately a one minute delta where they're tweeting and posting at the same exact time. Let's move on to post 4,139. This is a Twitter link and it's walked AWA. And it says, I feel that he should have been given the Medal of Freedom for this. And this is a video of Clinton and Comey. Take a listen to this video. Permitted by law and regulation. I had one device. Secretary Clinton used numerous mobile devices to send and to read email on that personal domain. My use of personal email was allowed by the State Department. None of these emails should have been on any kind of unclassified system. I did not email any um, classified material to anyone on my email. There is no classified material. There is evidence to support a conclusion that any reasonable person in Secretary Clinton's position or in the position of those with whom she was corresponding about those matters should have known that an unclassified system was no place for that conversation. Now down below, Q says facts versus fiction. Bridging, and this is in brackets and bold. Posting of Patriot Twit accounts serves to expand reach, prevent collapse, and maintain strength through unity. Post 4,000 140. 
This is the American flag. Down below, there's a Twitter link to the Associated Press and says, Breaking, Justice, Depar Justice Department is dropping criminal case against ex-Trump advisor Michael Flynn. According to court filing obtained by AP, the prosecution has been a rallying cry for the president in attacking FBI Russian investigation. Down below, it says, let freedom ring in all caps. Flynn has been exonerated. Van Grack, who has been involved in the Flynn investigation from the beginning, he decided to withdraw from the case. Why? I thought they had all this evidence. I thought they were going to move forward with this. He didn't state a reason. And what's very interesting, and this is coming from Undercover Huber, the last time Brandon Van Crack was on a Flynn filing was early February 2020. Potentially an indication of exactly when USA Jensen's review hit the jackpot. And that's when it was game over. Now, I do feel there's a lawsuit coming on. I do believe that Flynn most likely is going to be suing the media, the FBI, Department of Justice for blackmailing, hiding exculpatory evidence, for making up their entire case with falsehoods. I believe this huge, huge lawsuit is coming and maybe even personal lawsuits against these individuals. Now, Enoch tweeted out something about Flynn where Enoch took all the different posts about Flynn, put it together showing that Flynn, he took rubber bullets and he was always safe. This is what Enoch tweeted out. Three examples of past Q posts assuring us General Flynn only took a rubber bullet and was safe. Bonus, what is the purpose of a laser pointer? News unlocks the map, future proves past. Do you believe in coincidence? And this is the AP article, all the different posts. And it shows that Flynn, he was taking rubber bullets. He was never in danger of going to prison. They knew that he was going to be set free. Actually, Q has been telling us for a very long time. The reason why they kept it going this long is because they wanted the information to come out to show they never had anything, to show they made up all of it. So they dripped it out, they declassified, they set up Covington and Burling, they set up Eric Holder, and that brings me, very interestingly, to Technofog's tweet about Covington. Now, this new Flynn filing, Flynn's lawyers asked Judge to compel his former lawyers, Covington, to hand over Flynn's entire file. And it included this little tidbit. Covington lawyer Eric Holder made Twitter posts that were a significant problem for the defense and were discussed within the firm. So this is what Technofog linked to. It says, Mr. Holder appeared briefly at a client conference communicating about the firm's representation of Mr. Flynn and made a Twitter post that were a significant problem for the defense and were discussed within the firm. And I do believe that this is just the beginning. I, I think Eric Holder was much more involved in this, shaping the investigation, holding documents back. And I believe this is just the in they needed. Now, very interestingly, we can see that James Comey He's a little worried about what happened with Flynn. We know there are others that are very worried, Schiff, Brennan, and the rest. But James Comey decided to tweet out, and he decided to send a message to his deep state players. This is what he tweeted. The Department of Justice has lost its way, but career people, please stay because America needs you. The country is hungry for honest, competent leadership. Career people, stay. Protect the rest you need to do your job and you need to cover everything up and protect us this is not going to work let's move on to post 4141 q gives us an older post and it says the public will learn the truth the media will attempt to spin as a partisan attack the house will push for bar removal the house will open investigations into bar durham lack of confidence Full disclosure D-class provides truth. Foreign cooperation provides truth. What happens when corporate media knowingly pushes false propaganda information? What happens when the corporate media can no longer be trusted? The silent war continues. Down below gives us a Twitter link to Representative Adam Schiff. And it says, Flynn pled guilty to lying to the FBI about his illicit Russian contacts. His lies do not 
now become truths. This dismissal does not exonerate him, but it does incriminate Bill Barr in the worst politicization of the Justice Department in history. So Q is letting us know this is exactly what they were going to do. And here we have Schiff saying this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go after Bill Barr. This was done on purpose. They want them to go after Bill Barr. How does Bill Barr and Durham protect themselves? All they have to do is declass it all and say, hey, we didn't do anything. This wasn't partisan. We didn't do anything here. We were looking at the evidence, the documentation. Look what we found. Now, this was under the Obama administration. This is what the Mueller special counsel did. This is everything that they did. And let's take a look at this. They're allowing them to attack them so they can open up the can of worms. And Q says, keep watching the news. Pain is coming. And there's no way around this. And they know it. And what Q, Trump, the Patriots are doing, they're leading them into a trap. And this is a trap they will not be able to get out of. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.